back for another NAL Live. This is actually episode nine already, you know, just over a month. And it took me a little while, but man, I, I had to kind of build up so that I was prepared. I was nervous. I'm going to talk to the champ. And <laughs> haven't seen the photo. He's got the trophy to prove it. So I wanted to make sure I was at the top of my game uh, before I brought him on. But I got Coach James Fuller with me, head coach of the Jacksonville Sharks. How's it going, Coach? All right, Andrew. How you doing, brother? Doing good, doing good, man. I appreciate you joining me. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. It's fun to uh, to hear the stories of uh, you know the journeys that all the coaches um, you know have gone through from playing to coaching, and a lot of people don't realize you know the grind, the determination, the ups and downs. So this kind of gives us a good opportunity to share that with with fans and you know with fans out there if you're out there you know definitely comment let us know where you're where you're watching from you know i know the last few shows we've had people all over the world watch so post where you're watching let us know that uh, you're here and then uh make sure you post some questions for coach we'll we'll get to them but you know with with the sharks man uh there's a big bullseye it looks from from the talks of everybody they're like hey we're, we're gunning for the sharks you know they're trying to knock you guys off that that top pedestal. So should be fun. Oh yeah. It's going to be an interesting year for sure. So coach walk us through kind of like, you know, how you got into it. Like, you know, you, where did you grow up and kind of, you know, were you an athlete growing up um, and kind of just walk us through your career? Well, I'm, you know, I'm an army brat. So, um, and I have a big family. So, you know, I grew up traveling a lot, man. I got five older brothers an older sister and a younger sister. So, um, you know, we traveled a lot, you know, as kids, we had to kind of keep ourselves, uh, busy because, you know, my father was in the, in the army and my mom was busy trying to take care of all of us. So, you know, we kind of had to kind of had to, you know, do things our own way, you know, as kids growing up. So we learned what to do and what not to do wherever we were, uh, Kansas, Louisiana, um, Seattle, Tacoma, Washington, or, or Germany, Korea, wow. you know, and then settling back down in Tacoma, Washington, where I uh, went to junior high and high school. Um, How tough was that, though, just kind of bouncing around like that? You know, I look back on it now, and I, it wasn't as tough for the kids. <laughs> <As> you, <thought. laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, you know, I had, I had guys to play with, my brothers, you know. I, we were always on base, so there were always kids to play with, so – you know, for us, it was just like a vacation, I guess, moving to the next state, you know, you know, you do miss your friends and all that. But when I look back on the whole thing, I don't feel, you know, traumatized by it or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Well, it's got to be cool, too, just to see the different areas, too. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't it, it kind of shocked me talking to people. Some people never leave the hometown they're from. Oh, I know that's that would be right, crazy man. for me, man. I love exploring new areas. So me, too. I'm like that, too. And knowing that it gives you a different perspective on life. You know, you get to see how other people live, what they eat, how they, how they do things, you know? And so, you know, growing up, it just, when you can reach back to some of that stuff and, Oh, I remember this. I remember that. I think it kind of gives you a little, a little different outspec, a uh, different look on life. You know, did it make things difficult for you to like participate in sports because of that, you know, being in the army family? Um, no, because family? no, because the army, and the military itself had their own teams, okay. you know, so you, you were always able to play sports, you know. Now, um, the tough part was when traveling in between sports or, you know, something like that. But I was fortunate enough that I didn't have to go through that um, because my older brothers did. You know, when I got, you know, back to Washington State, you know, I was in junior high. Pop Warner was just, you okay. know, rolling and all that. So I got to participate in all that. You know, so at what, point, at what point did you kind of, you know, find football to be your your thing? Um, gosh, probably my junior year in high school. You know, I, I was a three sport athlete. I was I wrestle, uh, I run track and I played football all my all my life, you know, ever since I was a little tight. So, um, you know, when you start getting them letters from every college and, you know, around the world, you know, that you never go to. Uh, probably won't even accept you, but, um, but, uh, it's, it, 
it was then, you know, when you, you start thinking, oh, some people are ch- kind of checking me out, you know? Right. So I, um, so I, I, I got a letter from a junior college, uh, Walla Walla, Washington. Okay. And, and, uh, coach Kaiser, great, great guy, still friends to this day. He comes to my high school and he says, Hey, you know, you, you're pretty good. You know, can you go, you want to go to college? And I'm like, man, what college, you know, you know, I didn't know much about all that, you know, just to be honest about it. You know, we, our school wasn't that big and promoting players and promoting us to go to school. And we didn't have all the, the money for counselors and all this kind of stuff to kind of help you, you know, navigate through your grades and things like that. So I had to go to JUCO and I'll still to this day, we laugh about this. Me and coach Kai's is that he came to my high school stadium, high school in Tacoma, Washington, and we're watching me play on reel to reel. I still remember that sound. Click, 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 click. We're (laughs) winding click, 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 click. And he gave me a scholarship to Walla Walla and I drug along about four of my buddies and we had a great time and I was fortunate enough to uh, move on from there. You know, what, uh, what was your position? I uh, started off as a corner, um, but I was a little guy, man. I was, gosh, when I was in, shoot, I wrestled my sophomore year. I wrestled 119. Um, wow. And then I gained 20 pounds every year. Uh, the next year, I wrestled 141. You know, the next year I wrestled 168 once, you know, so I just kept gaining weight, gaining weight until I got into uh, uh, got into junior college where we didn't have a real meal program. Now, let's get this straight. You know, our <laughs> meal program was, you know, go down the street, you know, find <laughs> your own groceries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, top ramen, pancakes and <laughs> fried chicken. You know, I mean, that's three things I knew how to do. So, um, you know, I. I gained so much weight. And then as I got to co- uh, my four-year college at Portland State, where Tom Mason, Pokey Allen uh, got me there, um, you know, I started to gain a little bit more weight, started learning how to lift weights and 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 take care of your body, you know, training a little bit more than just being an athlete and going out there and lacing them up and playing, you know, like we all used just to. Just raw, just raw. Right, just raw, you know. And um, – and then I started gaining weight, ended up at about 215, and then it kept going. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, I got to slow this thing down. So then I moved to safety then. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, are you getting to, you're almost getting a linebacker status here. I well, mean, you know, you remember, I mean, I don't, I, I don't even know if they still do, I'm sure they do, but, you know, when I got drafted to the Chargers, man, you know, we had weight limits, you know, so. <laughs> So you get fined fifty dollars a pound a day, damn, you know, for being <laughs> overweight, you know. So I come in at two eighteen. I'm supposed to be at two fifteen, you know. That hundred fifty bucks a day for a kid like me is huge, <laughs> you know. I can't lose <laughs> yeah. that. So, so you know, you learn how to train, you learn how to lose weight, and you learn how to uh, do it the right way. So when you got, um, you know, out of you know towards the tail end of your college career, I mean, were you was playing professionally on your mind at that point? It was, but it wasn't a situation to where I was so, I wouldn't have been shocked if I didn't, you know, I mean, I, I was a little more realistic than some guys, you know, um, draft day, I'm asleep. You know, when I get the call, I am asleep, you know? <laughs> so, so, you know, when Bobby Beathard called me, you know, this honest to God, true. You know, and he's like, hey, can we fly you out today? I'm like, I just woke up. I'm you busy know, right now, man. You, just- <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so um, I I knew it was a long shot, you know, especially coming from a Division two school. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I, I try to work hard. I'm a warrior. You know, I try, I try to do, you know, I, I, I want to prove that I belong there. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, be able to do that. So you got drafted by San Diego? San Diego. San okay. Diego Chargers, uh, eighth round of 12 in 92. Yes. Okay, nice. Mm-hmm. And then how how was your, you know, pro, you know, career? Man, it was tough, you know. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it really is. You know, when you, when you come from 
especially, well, for me, because coming from a Division II school, I mean, you're already trying to prove yourself. Right. And you already think you're kind of a, you know, a tough, tough, bad dude because <laughs> you balled out and, you know what I mean? You're the best guy on your team and all that. And then you, you know, you show up in training camp and you're like, whoa, you know, all the best guy from their yeah, team. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm last on the totem pole, you know? So, you know, it's tough emotionally, but it also, you know, it, it was also an experience that I would never give up, you know, for anything. I mean, get to meet people, you know, get to challenge yourself, get to go against the best in the world. So, it's a, you know, it's an experience that, you know, you, you just can't put 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 anything on it. You know, there's just nothing that describes it, you know. So, but it's a tough go now, no, no doubt. How, um, how long were you, you know, playing after college? I uh, played in San Diego for two and a half seasons, well, two and a, a beginning of the season. Played in New Orleans, um, 95, and then got hurt. Uh, went over to NFL Europe, played in Scotland, to all my Scottish folks over there. Uh, won the championship there, and then went back to the Saints, and then got traded, to, I think, to the Eagles, 96, 97. So I ended up with four. Eagles. Oh man. That was my uh, hometown team, but I, I grew up a Cowboy fan. So it was like, I got bullied, you know, cause wow. Cowboys and Eagles just hate each other. I can't <laughs> believe you're saying that. You might not be able to go back to Philly. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I try not to anyway. There's unless I want like a cheesesteak or something. So I know, that's right. So were you, did you, start thinking about like, Hey, life after playing, like I want to be a coach or, you know, were you thinking about, you know, a career in whatever you were going to school for? I was actually thinking about coaching, but really didn't know how to go about it. You know, Um, I talked to, actually I played with Stan Brock and it was just fortunate that when I got back to the West coast, Stan Brock, got the Portland arena job. So he calls me up. He's like, Hey, do you want to coach? And, you know, we had uh, Robert Lyles from the Houston Oilers, Atlanta Falcons. He was on our staff, Bob Cortese. And so I said, yeah, you know, I'd I'd love to try it at least, you know, see if I'm good at it. And then I started in 99 and, you know, just kind of went from there. How did you like the arena game? Was that kind of like your first taste of it or did you were you following it before? I actually followed it the year before um, because we were Portland had a team before I got on the staff. So I followed it the year before, but, you know, just kind of it was on late night. I'd watch it, you know, laying in bed, kind of, you know, just kind of see what it was about. And it was exciting. You know, it was faster than I would play. You know, I'm a box safety, you know, I come down to make tackles. I don't, you know, cover high motion and all that kind of stuff, you know. Right. So it was interesting to see the different ways they, you know, challenged each other and the different coverages they played and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I got intrigued and the more I looked at it, the more I started writing stuff on paper, the more I started trying to figure out ways to, you know, design defenses. And then when I get there, you know, my first secondary, uh, when I was first secondary coach at uh, at Portland, I was told I couldn't do half the stuff I wrote down, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so you know. That's against the yeah. rules, coach. <laughs> right, right. You know, you can't do that zone blitz, you know, and things like that. So um, that just kind of made me want to get better and want to learn more. And, and then from there, it just kind of took off, you know. So when did you get your first um, head coaching opportunity? I got my first head coaching opportunity in 2000. Oh, gosh. Uh, 2000. 2000? I want to say 2001 season uh, in Bakersfield for the Bakersfield okay. Blitz. It was it was an offshoot of the L.A. Avengers. Uh, Casey Wasserman and yep. that whole crew. Um, and that was back then when AF2 was really strong, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of good AF2 teams mm-hmm. across the board. Um, 
you know, you had teams in Virginia, Green Bay was playing well. You know, you had you had teams just off Peoria Pirates. You, you know, Myers. you just had Fort Myers, yes, yeah, yes. Spear. Uh Sting. You know, you had you had teams that were just really good, you know, and coached by some good guys. So um, you know, it was it was it was good to be a part of that league. And, you know, being there as a head coach and learning in that division, I think was best for me. You know, you learn a lot what not to do, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, you know, that's just kind of how, how it all started from there. But, I, you know, I, I loved the opportunity, you know, and I took it and tried to make something of it. Like what was it about arena football that kind of, you know, got you hooked, like loving the game? Um, one thing was – trying to shut people down you know that was that was a big thing you know uh me and i don't know robert lyles uh when we we're in portland he saw us say coach we're gonna shut them cats down we go they never seen football like this you know and and that was just kind of like our thing you know let's figure out ways to drop the scores <laughs> you know let's figure out ways to make it difficult on the team and then that kind of just pushed everything from there you know, figuring out different things you could do, you know, personnel wise, just, you know, you immerse yourself in it after that. So after you left um, Bakersfield, what was your next stop? Uh, my next stop was Oklahoma city. Uh, well, uh, yard, yard dogs. No, was I, geez, I, it's so long ago. Um, <laughs> I went from Portland to actually I went to Portland and then I went to uh, Oklahoma City. Okay. Uh, that was my second uh, AFL team. And they were um, Oklahoma City Wranglers. Oh, Wranglers. Okay. Yeah. Was the yard so, dogs hey, after, wasn't the Yard Dogs there? Was that after? After. After. Okay. Way okay. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way after. So um, when I left Portland, we split up as a, as a staff. Two of them went down to, uh, to the Avengers. Brock and Lyles and myself and our old coordinator, Bob Cortez, went to the Oklahoma City Wranglers. So we took the Portland team there. And then from there, I went to Bakersfield. I mean, you got a lot of fans chiming in here, too, man. So I just see my boy Zach Brown <laughs> chime in, my boy yeah, Jerry Zach. Bain, Antoine Williams. Yep. These are all cats I have mad respect for. Herb Jones, just uh, go get them, Herb. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. no, These are all guys yeah, who I mean, played yeah, for me and who, man, I got mad, mad love for Coach Yarborough. I seen Josh on this. All, all good guys, man. Yeah. Um. So, you know, you were at um, OKC. Um, mm -hmm. Were you the D D coordinator there or what? DC. Okay. DC. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yep. DC there for two years. Um, and still to this day, I'm going to tell you, AFL, you robbed us out of a playoff berth. I'm just going to say that right now. What you happened? Was it officiating or what? No, we we had the one up on uh, Orlando. I think Jay Gruden was the uh, coach then. We had the one up on Orlando and we get a fax saying somehow we don't make the playoffs, but we had the one up on them. A fax. Wow. Couldn't even call a brother. Man. Yeah. So, so I'm going to say that. I had to get that off my chest because that's still bullshit. I don't know. What are they going to do now? <laughs> well, ain't going to do much. Damn it. I want that ring. I want that ring. We're going to go back and let's do a redo. Let's right, do right, right, right. Mm -hmm. nah, that's the tough part of it. So, yeah, but Oklahoma City was a good place. Good fans. Um, and the booming market too. I don't oh, know how it man. Been, but it, man, it's really exploded over the last twenty years. Well, I think we caught the beginning of you know. I think yeah. we caught the beginning with Bricktown and all that, and mm -hmm. you know the myriad. They just hit uh, the year after that, I think, or two years later. They just built the new arena they have now. Right. Um, but the fans were great. Um, the city was great. Uh, we had a really good team, and. You know, again, it was it was a situation where I don't have a lot of complaints about teams. Um, and this is one where I definitely have no issues with. We, we had a good staff and, and a lot of good people working for us. 
and says sometimes you just got to set the stats straight. So, <laughs> get those stats straight. <laughs> they, they got your back, you. man. They got Preach. your back. Preach. So, how are you as a coach out there on the field, man? Are you one of those? Are you like are you like real aggressive and yell? You like to yell? Oh, you jumping up and down? Well, you throw your hat. No, I don't wear hats during the game. Okay. You know, I, I show the ball head and just sweat. Um, <laughs> I try to be fair. I try to be – I try to not to yell too much. My players will probably disagree with me. Players, I, if you're on here, chime in. Man, I need to know the inside. Um, <laughs> but I'm honest with them, you know, and that's that's one thing, you know. It's one thing I, I try to be is is, is – be honest to them, give it to them a hundred percent, give it to them raw, let them know, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And, you know, some guys can take it. Some guys can't. Um, I try to coach how I try to coach how I want to be coached, how I wanted to be coached. You know, I want it right to your face. You know, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be, you know, I want to be honest with you, but at the same time, if you mess up, you're going to hear it. You What's know? that face? What's that face he's talking about, man? <laughs> you know what I'm talking. I know what he's talking about. That's gonna but... be a meme. I'm like, I'm gonna have a photographer catch it this season. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I try, I try to, you know, I try to be more informational, right? You know, than just to yell. You know, I, I don't believe in just yelling to yell, and, but I do believe in <laughs> these guys being straight. <laughs> I, I I can't wait to see this man. I'm coming to a game. I'm gonna see this this stare, this look. You don't gotta Johnny Ben. Hey, no, it's funny because her, Antoine, Johnny Bain were all with me in Richmond, and me and Johnny been together for about five years now. But um, we we went through some growing pains. Let's just say that in Virginia, and, and we had some ups and downs and. There was there was some staring at each other. There was some cussing at each other, but you know, there's <laughs> nothing but love now. Yeah. So Richmond, I was in Richmond just prior to you. I was the league president when uh, the Bandits were there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years back, so I was at the the Richmond's. Uh, you, did you play at the Civic Center too? Yeah. Uh, or the Coliseum yeah. and oh, Coliseum. Oh, Coliseum. The, did you Coliseum. do the outdoor too? No, no. Uh -uh. Okay, because I know Richmond outdoor. played like outdoors that one season or something. It was or was that it was a year. Or? Don't get us confused with you know we were the real team there. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You know, what was my, the other team? Was Raiders, I, I, I'm not even going to mention them on there. Okay, because there's right. only one team <laughs> that I coached for there, and it's the Richmond Raiders. I'll tell you None what. None of the other teams matter. They have except for had... Richmond Speed. Richmond Speed. Yeah, big up to Criswell. Yeah, he was with uh, he was with the Bandits there for those that at least one year. I don't know about the second year, but uh, yeah, no, they man, there was some some good talent on that uh, Speed team. Boy, was eh. they had Boy, some, they had some studs. They were ahead of the game there. You know, they had all yeah. them boys from the Virginia area, Virginia Beach area. You know, they had oh, yeah. they had some. Some some real good ball players there. We still to this day, me and Criswell, that's a really good friend of mine. We talk about it all the time. Is he you still know? in Richmond? Uh yes, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk to nice. him today. Yep. Nice. I saw his name uh pop up on Facebook recently, probably on like the NAL page or something. It might have been low mm -hmm. to like the post. So so that's uh, cool to yeah. see. But I mean, that's the cool thing about like this business is like, you know, just think of all the cities that you've, you know, you've worked in and, and then all the people around the league and, you know, it's like some of the guys you don't really care for, but a lot of them it's, it's like that, that camaraderie though. And um, even the ones that you don't like, you just, you just want to beat them anyway. So talk a little track. That's right. You know, it's, like, right. you know, yeah. but, but, it's uh, a, it's a great environment, you know, it's a great environment for play. The thing that makes it a little more intense, I think is because you are so close to each other. You know, I mean, during a game, you are, I mean, I could read your lips from across the deal, you know, yep. you're talking mess about me. I'm going to see it. <laughs> you know? Look at so, his bald head over there. <laughs> right, right. It's shining. So, um, you know, that's what I think makes it so intense, you know, the, just the arena game in itself, especially in the NAL when you got all these different rivalries, you know. So 
you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for, you know, fans, if you haven't seen the game, to come out because it's definitely a different different animal than the outdoor game. So you your first stint in the NAL was up in uh, Maine? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. In Maine and 18. Mm-hmm. Okay. In Maine, yep. And it was, it was an experience, you know, it was an experience that – How's Maine? I've never been there. I just know it's place. very far north. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. If you get there after June, you know, <laughs> and when you're not, when it's not cold, you know. But the summer's really nice, you know. You get to big tourist area, you get lobster for dirt cheap, you know, and all the good seafood. So, um, you know, it's, it's it was it was an experience in that way that was was awesome. But the beginning of our experience as a team and as as a first year team was, was tough, you know, and I got nothing but mad respect for every player who played for me there because they yeah. went through hell, you yeah. know, the first, the first seven weeks, I mean, you're, Oh, what you're one and seven, you know, you're one and seven, uh, some things aren't going right. And, you know, everywhere, you know, not just, yeah. you know, I mean, shoot, I was probably coaching crazy because of all the things we were <laughs> going through, you know? So, so, um, but I will give them this after that. And when they, we got all the stuff straight and we got to be able to just play football. I mean, we, we ran off what seven out of eight, you know? Nice. So, and that's all because of the players, you know, they bought into what we finally started doing. Um, we made some pretty good acquisitions during the year and, and we never lost, you know, I never lost my guys, you know, and, and that was important to me. Say, that's the key that. is like you really find out what guys are made of, right? When you're down. It's easy, right. it's easy when you're winning. You know, right. nobody's pointing right. the finger, everybody's happy, you know, those bus rides or plane rides are nice. But man, when you lose week after week and uh it it, it can wear you out. And it it definitely uh you know, without good leadership, it could it could be destroyed. And so that speaks a lot to your leadership there. And, I, and, and again, it, it, it wasn't really, you know, I don't want to take the credit for it because we all were going through it. You know, yeah. we, we, we all were struggling, you know, I, I can't lie. You know, it was a tough situation. You know, you're far away from home. A lot of these guys have never even been nowhere near Maine, <laughs> you know? Is that uh, it's, US? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's cold. You know, and, and, you know, you're practicing and it's cold outside and, and, you know, things aren't going right. And it, it took every one of them guys to make it happen. I mean, it's just yeah. honest to true. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's, it's good to see a good group of guys be able to pull through and, you know, it just brings those bonds even closer, you know? Right. Together. Right. That is one thing I will say, because that group of guys there, I am still talk to almost every one of them. In Any of those way. guys with you now in Jacksonville? Uh, Devin Wilson is with me in Jacksonville. Uh, Kyron Jones. Um, do I got another one? I think that Johnny Bain was with me in Jacksonville uh, last year. He's out uh, with Frisco Fighters with Clint Dozell out there, which okay. I know he'll do a great job. Um, I think we had about three or four guys come with right. us uh, to Jacksonville. I They didn't even know I was going there by right. then. I kind of backed out for a minute because yeah. I didn't know where I'd be coaching after Maine. So they, Cy Burley, um, had signed them to, to Jacksonville. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So how did that um, all come about, you know, to get down in Jacksonville? Um, just kind of on a, on a whim, you know. I was, I was actually – talked to a few teams in the NAL, I won't mention their names, um, about working for them. And it just didn't work out, you know, it just didn't work out for whatever reason, no disrespect to them. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get a call from Saya, uh, who I know from coaching against more, you know, in the early AFL days, um, or play, uh, I was coaching, he was playing. Um, and then we coached against each other in the NAL and 
you know, we had a couple conversations, took a few weeks, you know, and he, you know, was, I was fortunate, you know, that he pulled the trigger on me, which is tough to do. You know, it's hard, you know, some guys don't, you know, want head coaches coming in to be assistant right. coaches. It's just honest to God truth, yeah. you know, and that says a lot about Sia and, and, you know, his confidence. His, yeah. his confidence level and, and, you know, what he want, want, wants to accomplish, you know, and I, I, you know, I just respect him, for, you know, for that. All right. You know, this guy, um, out of all your places you've coached, where is your favorite? And you don't have to say that your current <laughs> one because he's asking you either. Well, so we'll take that one, one off the that, table. That's one of my bosses in Jacksonville is by far right. the best in the NAL. Outside of Jacksonville throughout your career, what was your favorite spot? Oh, man, Dallas. Dallas coaching for the Desperados. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah. For a lot of reasons, you know. You were there at a good time, too. Oh, like, man. that was that was booming at that point. Was that yeah. owned by the Cowboys at that point? Or yeah. Or was that yes. after? No, right it was owned by yeah. Jerry, yeah. Um, which is, you no, know, we, we had a hell of a staff. You know, Steve Criswell, Ter Terrence Gray, Will McClay, who's now the head of scouting at the Dallas Cowboys. Um myself uh coach wise i mean we had a very good staff but more than that i mean we had ball players you know and you know and them three i think i was there three years i think we only lost five games you yeah. know six games maybe in three years um now we lost the games that mattered you know right you know which is unfortunate but we had ball players clint dozell will pettis duke pettijohn you know, C. Weatherington, Ricky Simpkins. Oh, I can go on. Diallo Burks, Nash was our receivers. Oh, man, we had Shuby up there with the Shuby shake. Um, on top of that, though, that's a, it's a it's such a great market, too. Like, just yeah. there's so much to do. There's great food, just great stuff to do. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, and it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't hurt that you use all the Cowboy facilities, too, now. You yeah, know, I mean, yeah. our opposite. Man, man, that <laughs> yeah. was my team back in the day, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, you know, the guys enjoyed that, that, you know, they felt like they're a part, you know, of a professional organization, cared about them. And, you know, day in and day out, you know, our staff, who I got to give Will McClay, my boy, big ups, because, you know, I call him my big brother because he taught me, you know, everything I know, you know, the smartest man. I know football wise for sure. Who was was the head coach? Was it like the former like special teams coordinator for the Cowboys? I forget his name. Was that no? Was it was Will McClay. Okay. Will McClay. Mm -hmm. Will McClay from Rice University. He played in the Rain League for a little bit. Um, was scouting with the Cowboys. He was doing double duty back then, scouting okay. for the Cowboys and coaching. Um, which, I mean, he's a man who's a straight workaholic. Um, you know, taught me how to grind each and every day, each and each hour of the day. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not working, someone else is, you know. So talk to me about championships. What, um, have you been in any championships throughout your career from playing all the way on up till now? Um, what's that look like? Um, I have been in, gosh, high school. We were horrible. Um, College, we were really good. Uh, Division two, we'd always end up in the playoffs. I think we lost to Pittsburgh State my senior year with uh, Moore and all them beasts up there. Um, I And when I was in Richmond, we we're like the Buffalo Bills, and I got to say sorry to all my Richmond fans and, and players, but we went three times and lost three times. Um and then I had been just the one uh, with Jacksonville. Um, as a player, I went to a championship in the World League. We won the championship in the World League in 96, the Scott, okay. um, with the Claymores. Um, so I only got two. I got the one last, well, in 19, and I got one in 96 as a player. And I've been to what, four now, so I'm one in three. Nice. Coach Foster, another D2 baller there. Let's um, go, D2. Let's go. 
<laughs> so you, what you're saying is you don't need any more championships. You're good. You got enough. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. What I'm saying is I got more uh, fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we always. I mean, we do this to win championships. You know, exactly. I mean, anybody who says that dude, that is the case is just wrong. You know, I, we do this to win championships and get that hardware and have some bragging rights, you know, but no one cares what you did last year. No. You know, no one gives a damn what you did mm -hmm. last year. And then, and that's going to be the tough part. You know, you got everybody gunning for you. You know, you got uh, players who are going to think, oh, we won last year. So you're going to be able to walk in the arena and, and, you know, whoop some tail. And that's just not the case. You know, you got good coaches out there. You got good players out there and they'll have something to say about it. But no one gives a damn what you did last year. Nah, you know? and, that, and, and, and that that's, happened. That happened to me. Like, you know, win every game of the year, lose the championship. Yeah. Then the next year come back and the guys thought they were entitled. And man, <laughs> they got smacked in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it's like, man, you got a target, if anything, right now. Right, right. Well, because I mean, guys get a whole off season to stew. You know, yeah. they get to think about the ways that you beat them and how you beat them, and you know. And I, shoot, I know right off the bat. You know, Carolina's pissy as all get out right now. You know, so I know that we play them first this, you know, this season. So I know they're going to come for our heads. You know, but I think, you know, I did an internship with Belichick. Um, in 2004 with the NFL program and got to go through training camp with him. And I was, I think it was 2004 or somewhere around there. So um, it was after they had won a championship, you know, and he told everybody in there that don't wear your championship stuff. Don't, I don't want to see a ring. I don't want to see a shirt, you know, take all this stuff off the walls because no one gives a damn what you did last year, you know, yeah. and it's hard to win a championship, let alone it's hard to win a championship back to back. Too. Yeah. You know, and, and you got to take yourself out of that and just focus on you know, the cliche, you know, what's in front of you, you know, that's the only way you're going to do it. So how do you kind of keep your, your players in check? Um, we're all men, you know, we're all men. I should not have to beg you to practice. I should not have to beg you to try to get better. I should not have to beg you to do the right thing because most of us have children and you tell your kids the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you say so you teach your kids, you know, and no disrespect, not saying they're kids. I'm just saying right. that there is a point where you have to say, Hey, I'm going to either do this. I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to try up. to get better. Yeah. Man up work every day, you know, Iron sharpens iron. You know, we say that in practice every day. Iron sharpens iron. You know, you're going to have to work hard every day. You're going to have to punch the clock. You know, you're going to have to compete. And, you know, I, I I don't believe in a lot of that, you know, that grandfather and that baby say, hey, man, take this <laughs> Come on, man, off. I'm a vet, hey, man. I'm a vet. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. No, nah, man. You know what I mean? I mean, there's times for that. Don't get me right. wrong, you know. But, you know, to be good, you got to grind. You got to put in the work. Yeah. When you are coaching, do you, are you one of those coaches that will like, um, you know, respond to a fan on the sideline or like give a fan five? Or are you like, just, you're so laser focused in, you don't, you don't even, you know, know they're there. It's a little bit of both. I always can hear them, right. you know, but sometimes you don't want to respond. I won't give you the pleasure of letting you know I can you hear talk. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? So, you know, it goes back and forth, which I love. You know, that's, that's, right. that's part of the game. You know, it's part of the beauty of this game is that, you know, you can yell in my ear, you know, maybe not so much now because we'll have masks on and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, but I love being next to somebody. You know, I love, I love the fact that you can tell me what you feel about me. Hey, coach. You know, throw away your play call list. It isn't working. You know, you know, all the little things that guys say to you. I like that. So I'll respond every blue moon, you know, but I won't get in a, in a, you know, back and forth with you. You know, you know, we just go out and play ball and hopefully my boys have my back and they're going to ball out. And when we walk out of there, you know, I'll just be able to give you a look and walk away. I think that that, you know, 
the closeness of the fans just adds to everything, you know, because mm -hmm. you can, I mean, I always like going on the road because I, number one is it's the only time I could ever really watch a game, but like, mm -hmm. I like the fans to like, I love when they're real hostile and you score and it just goes dead silent, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, after the game, especially after you whip up on them, you know, those fans who were dogging you all game long, are the first ones out there for your autograph and a photo and like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. The best. it is the best. I used to have a player in Richmond, Lawrence Lewis, call him the law. Law, law dog. He played for you still? Yeah. Damn. He had Come to on be, now. How old was he? Cause he played for the speed. Yeah. I, I don't want to date him. Man, so he had to be at least in the mid thirties at that point. <laughs> I ain't gonna put it out there. I know he balled for me. He was but a he's, stud, man. Boy, he was a good ball player. Good ball player. <laughs> Both sides of the ball, he could do it too. Um, but he used to walk in the arena and say, Boo me. So when everybody started booing, he used to go around the arena saying, Boo me, boo me, you know, just <laughs> you know, hyping the crowd up, you know. Oh, yeah. He was the worst guy to get into an argument with because he had some good ones, you know. Yeah. But that's the beauty of the game, you know, have a little fun with it. Don't take it too far and, you know, we'll all be good. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what gives those fans like that, that personal connection still. So definitely, you know, it, it definitely helps. So talk to me about, um, you know, kind of like the worst place like that. I, I would, I don't even know if the worst is the right word, but like the place, like you just, you don't like playing. Or like you know, it's just you know, it the atmosphere, the fans are just bonkers. Hmm. Don't like playing because they're good, or don't like playing. No, because no, not not because of that. Because that's horrible. that you're not afraid of anybody there. But no, more on the just you know the fans or the atmosphere. I would say Columbus. Columbus has great fans, good Man, fan base. They're crazy, and, aren't they? Right around the bench there. Yeah, and and they stay <laughs> on you now. They stay on you. They haven't they haven't let me forget a lot of things, and you know because they like, were. Man, in would the, you yeah. run a Would you run a background check on me or something? Right, right. You know they've been they've been uh, we've been battling with Columbus for a while, so I have so probably Columbus. You know they got you know good fan base, uh, good coaching staff, good players, and and it's tough to win there. You know it just yeah. it just is. You know it's it's. They're right there in your face, you know. They tell you how you feel, and you know, and, and they know the game, which is which is important, you know. Right. Yeah, and that team's been there for a while, so I mean, it's just they've been able to build, and uh, yeah. yeah, they just got those rowdies, man. And they do it. I mean, that's smart. I mean, but that, but that's the the fun part of it is just it's annoying as hell in the moment, <laughs> you know, but. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, no, nah, it makes yeah, you, it got, you got you got to keep pulling your guys away from the sidelines. They start getting into it, you know. Not and that's where they got you, and that's what they get you right there. You know, they put yeah. them guys in that corner just to irritate you. You know. So what what do you do in the off season? What do you do like outside of football? I fish and I play golf. And hang with my boys. You know, I have a group of about seven guys. We all went to junior college together, and we're still tight to this day. Our kids are tight, and so I spend a lot of time with them. Not as much now because of COVID, but yeah. um, I spend a lot of time on the water. I like to fish a lot. So, what uh, what kind of fishing are you doing? Is it like lake fishing out there, or? Oh, uh, I do it all. We have okay. lakes. We have rivers. I fly fish. You know, lures live bait, go out in the ocean. Just caught a few salmon a couple months ago, you know, down at the coast. So, you know, I like to stay on the water in, in Jacksonville. I was going to uh, ask you about the East Coast. How is, um, how is that? Uh, is it pretty different as far as the fishing goes? It's a lot different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I love about, you know, fishing down in Jacksonville is because I don't get none of the fish out West, you know, that I can catch in Jacksonville. So, right. you know, I... Everybody knows if they can't get a hold of me, I'm <laughs> you're out on the water. Yeah, yeah. You know, players, you know, guys who've known me for years, um, you know, they know I like to be out on the water. That's my little peace of mind. Yeah, I like to go down. When I lived in uh, the Fort Myers area, we would go uh, backwater fishing a lot. You know, just, yeah, it's fun. But I grew up like, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so it was like a lot of like 
lake, pond. Yeah, you know, like, I river, like that too. You know. We do that a lot in Jacksonville too. You, know, you can literally yeah. drive down the street and pull over. Everybody knows I keep my fishing poles in my car. So, <laughs> so you're re- it's like, all right, you're ready. To every do time, fishing poles in the car. You'll Are you one of those see. guys I'll see like driving down the highway yep. that pulls over in like a little yep. retention pond or <laughs> side yep. of the road? Nice. 100%. 100%. Do you eat, what you, you eat what you catch? No, not all the time. No. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'll eat some redfish, you know, or, you know, but I'm, I'm, I, I catch and release and I'll only keep what I'm going to eat, you know, yeah. for that, for that night or something like that. But um, for the most part, I'm catch and release. How about um, golf? You said you like the golf. Are you, oh, are you yeah. good? I can play a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say I'm, um, you know, Tiger Woods or nothing, but <laughs> you know, I like I like taking a little money every once in a while. <laughs> nice. I yeah, I suck, man. I can I look good when I pull up. I'm like, man, okay, got the nice yeah. bag, got the nice clubs, got the outfit on. Yeah, got the, got the, glove, right the clean glove and everything. Exactly, that's the key. You see somebody with a clean glove, you got you got to try to get them. That's like an AOL email address. Yeah. Hey, I still have an AOL email. See that? Come on, man. We gotta we gotta yeah. get Gmail or something. Hey man, I just got on Facebook like two years ago. So oh, I ain't lying. What's your uh, TikTok? I want to see your TikTok videos. Oh, you'll never see that. Come on. Uh, come on, man. I'm you got I'm, TikTok I'm, at least though, don't you? I don't have none of that stuff. I'm not I'm not a a technical wizard, you know, unless it's breaking down film or downloading film or anything that has to do with that kind of stuff. I can do all that stuff. I mean, my daughter set up my uh, Facebook account. She sets up my phone. She does all that stuff for me. I can't do that stuff. Yeah. So just remember that fans, if coach wants to go golfing and he's like, bring some money, just be careful. (laughs) Be careful. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I wish I, I mean I wish I could play more, but do you um, um play a lot when you're down in Jacksonville or is it more back home? More back home. I didn't last year I did or year before I didn't bring my clubs. Okay. Um yeah, for I did on purpose too, you know, but I'll bring them this season, uh just to have because there was a few times where I wanted to go out. Um our quarterback, Mike Foffel and oh, Johnny Bain. Um, we got a few golfers on the team, uh, last a couple seasons ago, and they always wanted me to go out with them. And, you know, I just didn't have my clubs with me. Didn't want to rent clubs, you know, even though I could have blamed it on using, clubs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tell but, Steve, man, tell Steve he needs to get a, a trade out at a country club there or something. So you can just, you got a place to go. Well, that's, the, that's the beauty of Jacksonville. Steve stays up on it. Yeah. You know, Steve stays up on it. Steve, my boy Tim, you know, Dave, you know, the whole crew in the office, yeah. they always try to give us something to do. Yeah. You know, uh, hey, Johnny Bain, yeah, what's, what's better, better than, than one in a row? Two I've in heard, a row, baby. I've heard a few people put that up here. So, <laughs> hey, That's fans out there, went. if you've got any more questions, throw them out here before uh, we wrap up. We got a few more minutes left. So, uh, any questions for coach? How about yeah. um, if I come up to Jacksonville, what is where are we having dinner? Like, what's the spot? What's oh, Lord. gosh, I don't even know where are we going. I don't even know. Stable. I don't get out that much, man. You know? come on, coach. I really don't. Do you are I you mean, you a chef? You cook? Yeah, I cook at home. Um, but I just, you know, work a lot when I'm there. I'm I'm on a mission, man. You know, so I try what's to your work. your favorite takeout spot? Uh, there's a few fish spots that we'll go to. Okay. You know, we'll go and get some fried fish or something like that. Um, can't go wrong, you know, with any kind of seafood down in Jacksonville. So, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll try to, you know, get some seafood in any way possible, fried, you know, baked, boiled, you know, however you got it, we'll, I, I'll, I'll eat some of it, you know. Well, sure. Coach Foster up in Jersey had uh, – he told me that he uh, he he cooks. So mm-hmm. he will actually cook for the team. Oh, snap. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, done that before. Yeah. No, I done a, I grilled <laughs> out a couple times for the team, but <laughs> hey man, when you're a coach, you gotta do it all, man. You gotta figure out ways to keep your boys happy, you know. Yep. Uh, yeah, so check out uh Evan here, coach. Uh he was a Tampa Bay Storm fan. Solid rivalry for years with Jacksonville. Should I jump on the Sharks bandwagon? Come on board, baby. We take some all. Fins up. Move all. <laughs> so Jonathan says breakfast at Maple Street by the beach is good. So that's cool. I'm gonna yes. have to check that out when I get up there. I mean, I'm all all the players know all the spots, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they're always trying to go out and be food connoisseurs, you know, and, and find all these little spots to get to eat at. You know, there I was like, Coach, I went here, I went there. I'm like, damn, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Can you bring me something back? Bring they me would. I know he would for sure. So last last few things here. So wh- what do we got behind you here? I see we got some helmets and footballs. What uh, What's kind of on your wall here? What do you got? These are some photos I have from, I don't know if you can see that, yep. from yep. Uh, San Diego. Okay. And nice. That's a photo of an interception I got from Troy Aikman. Nice. And that's a game against the Raiders, I believe. These are all San Diego photos here. Okay. Nice. Um, just some balls, my old Desperado helmet over here. I love the logo they had. I mean, but I got to give a shout out to my Bakersfield Blitz and my boy 42 Juice. May he rest in peace. Um, that was one of my good, good, good buddies and players, you know. Um, and I got to have the original. Was that your game worn? Yep, the first ones to wear these uniforms. Nice. All the fan game. Um, and then all my hats and all my stuff and from everywhere I probably coached or been or somewhere. And then all the, my John Grisham and James Patterson books. What's your most, um, you know, kind of proudest, you know, most prized thing that you have there? Oh, golly. Um the most prized is probably that Bakersfield Blitz helmet. You know, that yeah, that means a lot to me, you know. I mean, it's a to see someone pass away on a football field and then have to tell their parents it's it's something that never never yeah. leaves, you know. And for all the guys who know me, they know I wear a 42 on I've worn a 42 on my arm ever since then. You know, every game I've ever coached, no matter what I'm coaching, high school, you know, shrine game, whatever, I always wear it. And it's, you know, it's something that's important to me. It's important to a lot of the guys who played with him. And it's, it's, it's important to me. Very important. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that's, you know, very unfortunate. And it's nice that you continue to kind of carry you know, that memory of him and, um, you know, everything with you. So, uh, yeah, definitely yeah. Tough. yeah, it's a rough deal, you know, but, you know, you, you try to move on and, you know, you find inspiration from it. Yeah. You know, and, that's, and that's what we were all fortunate to be able to do. How was um, coaching in the spring league? Coach Rez wants to know. It was a great experience, uh, you know. I mean, um, the staff I was with, I had been b- with before, um, in the college shrine game at Glanville and June Jones, and you know the whole that whole Yahoo crew. A um, lot of talent. Um, Look who popped on your boy, Krizer. What's going <laughs> on, brother? What's going on, man? So wifey, I said hi. Um, but it was awesome, man. I mean, you know, you got to be with some good coaches, you know, and and you got to, you know, challenge yourself again. You know, I always try to keep my eleven man brain moving. So um, 
it was fun to be around all the different guys and the different guys from different colleges and just learning and talking to the guys on how they were coached and what they liked and what they don't like. And, you know, so it knows an experience that, you know, if you get a chance to do it, I think, you know, all us coaches would, would benefit from it for sure. It's some good talent out there too. Man, you know, Man, that's some good ball players, some really good ball players, you know, and you know, it's just, it's frustrating to me about is that all these ball players out there, there's room for us all to have a platform to play, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. You know, I know it's tough now, but I just wish there was more of a platform, you know, whatever it may be for, for players to be able to be seen because no disrespect to anybody in the NFL, I've seen some guys who are better than other guys, you know, who aren't mm -hmm. in the NFL. It's just a fact, you know, and it's, it just sucks that some of them guys don't get that look. What do you think of, like, the XFL and the uh, – what was it, the AAF um – you know, I, I love it. Yeah. I love all football. You know, I, I'm all for all that. You know, um, I wish everybody could kind of come to an agreement how to do it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> without stopping, you know, halfway through the year, you know, but yeah. I'm all for, I'm all for football. I could watch football year round, you know, so, you know, it's more football, the better for me. What's your uh, NFL team that you follow? Let's see. Seahawks. All right. Come on, man. At 206. <laughs> 206 is in the house. You you follow any other sports like NBA, MLB, NHL? Um, I follow the NBA a little bit, okay. you know, you know, but not as much as I used to. You know, I'm more of a more of a college football, college basketball fan, you know. Okay. Um, and more so because my daughter played basketball, you know, growing up and my buddy's kids have played basketball. One of them played for Gonzaga for a few years, you know, so, okay. you know, it's, it's, I'm more of more of that kind of fan. You know? All right. Last question uh, coming from YouTube. What is your most favorite memory with the Sharks? Huh? My favorite memory of the Sharks is probably, well, there's really two. And it's all Can the I same. Pull that game. picture back up, and <laughs> <laughs> it's probably two of the of the same game. One is talking to the defense on the sideline when you know you're down, you know, and the way they reacted to it, you know, and then of course the final play of the game, you know, to be able to have a stop, you know, on the last play of the game when you're on the field is, is, is pretty, pretty simple. Was that against Columbus? Uh, Carolina. Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah. heard both of, I've heard stories from both of those guys that, you know, um, so I remember that, you know, you, you guys broke their hearts at some point. So <laughs> that's all I know. Well, they did the same to me. I know that. <laughs> exactly. Sure. <laughs> exactly. if that ball would have bounced the other way absolutely right right hey you got to be lucky to win championships too you know you know you yeah. gotta have a little gotta be good gotta have good coaching and you gotta have a little luck well coach man it's gonna be fun kind of you know watching you guys try to try to repeat you know everybody is just gunning and it was cool to hear from uh the uh, league meetings there was a lot of a lot of uh trash talking going on already so uh, that just makes it all the more fun. So well, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting, you know, and I'm looking forward to, you know, coaching against some of these coaches in this league um, and, you know, having a great, a great season, you know, fins up Duval, baby. Coach Rez says you guys just finished, but uh, tomorrow we're back for another show. I've got, um, the owner of the Ontario bandits, um, um, Johnson with me. Um, so that's going to be great to, uh, to have Patrick Johnson on there. Um, you know, he played in the league for a bunch of years and, you know, they're kind of going to bring that divide together, you know, West coast to East coast and, and expand the NAL over the next few years. So it'll be fun to hear from him tomorrow, but coach, Thanks again for uh, joining me, man. 
Appreciate I it. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one, Andrew. Take care now.